Hello students, you are welcome to our lesson for today. Today we learn our topic of classification and uh, we introduce this lesson. Our topic for today we, we are going to learn or we learn the topic is classification of living things. Kingdom plantae or the, the kingdom plantae. So you are welcome to learn with me. My name is Mr. Magul. Um, expert with chemistry, physics, and biology practicals. So you are welcome to learn with me. The important of learning through this video, you will understand the organism one by one. The, the full classification from the, the common name, from the common name up to the economic importance, of each specimen, each organism, as it will be provided in your in your practical examination. So, welcome to learn with me through this lesson. And then our our organism we start we started to learn today. We starting to learn today is the fern plant. You know, fern plant. Fern plant is this one. Fern plant. This one, this is the fern plant. This is fern plant. You see, this is fern plant. So, if you are in an environment which favor this organism, you can you can switch your mind. Then you can remember where I have been observed. So, this is fern 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 plant. So, let's start with the, our lesson classification of fern plant. Apart from looking the diagram, we are going to classify the, 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 the fern plant in different ways. The first classification we are going to look at the common name. The common name is, as I have said, this is fern plant. Fern plant. And the kingdom is it belongs to kingdom plantae. Kingdom plantae. And the division of phylum is Division Philisinophyta. Philisinophyta. Those are the classification. So when we be asked to classify, classify specimen X, which is fern plant, up to division level, you have to start kingdom, and division. So this is kingdom plantar, division Philisinophyta, or Pteridophyta, that is a, a phylum or division of this organism fermi plant another classification we look observable features observable features when you observe what what you see when you look at what you see from here up to here from here up to the end of this fermi plant the first observable features i observe here it has a reason this is reason it has reason that is the first feature. I use it because this is singular. And then when you answer this question, what are observable features of specimen X or of any plant? You have to use it because this is a singular organism. Don't include members or don't use they. Don't include many. Just use it. It has a reason that is the first observable feature. The second, it has true roots, uh, true roots, stem, and leaf-like structure. So this looks like true structure. This is the leaves. This is the reason when you observe. But it has a steep. It has a steep. This one. This is the steep. As a fern, this is steep. The part which is from the, the, the rhizome up to the, where the leaves have been touched, this is steep. And then, when you take the, the leaves, this one, this and this one, this joint is called the, the pinna. The leaves is called the pinna. The side, the leaves, it means this one, this one, and the, there is a 
you can say this is a segment of leaves. So it means one segment within a leaf is called epina. So that is observable features. So another feature, it has adventitious root. This is adventitious root. Adventitious root. That is observable features of a fairly, a fairly plant. Do you understand? Yes, observable features. Distinguish with these characteristics to its phylum Phyllocinophyta. Why specimen this? Why if any plant belongs to Phyllocinophyta? That is very important questions. Or we can say this is distinguishing characteristics of any plant to its or to its phylum or to its division Phyllocinophyta. Or why it belongs to Phyllocinophyta? The reason is because one, it has leaves which produces spores, structure called leaf fronts. When you, you have a mature, mature fair, you will see there is a flaws within our, our there is a flaws, yes. So this flaws produce spores. That is the second reason or feature, characteristics, belongs to division it. The second, it has a sori or solas in singular that produces spores also. So, fronts we put it with the solas. Number three, it has vascular bundles such as xylem and the, and the phloem. So, this is fair, it has the phloem and the xylem which transport water and the other transport nutrients. That is the number three, it has vascular bundles such as xylem and the phloem. That's why it belongs to the division Phyllocinophyta. Number four, it shows alternation generation. It means we produce it by both sexual reproduction, asexual and the sexual reproduction. Those are alternating. And number four, it has a true leaves and the root like structure. That is the reason why it belongs to division Phyllocinophyta. Another classification of fenny plant, we look about the habitat of fenny plant. Fenny plant found in terrestrial areas, but mostly in wet places. Mostly in wet places, such as in most areas near dams and the rivers. This is fenny found in wet places, cold places. Mode of nutrition. This fern plant undergoes or exhibit autotrophic mode of nutrition because this is a plant can manufacture their own food. So the mode of feeding, the mode of nutrition is autotrophic nutrition mode. More so reproduction. A fern, as I have said, undergo alternation generation. It means it produces both sexually and asexually by generating, by generation, alternation in which the sporophyte generation is dominant over gametophyte generation. That is how we produce, finally produced by both sexually and asexual. That is mode of reproduction. Another classification we see Advantages of fenny plant. Advantages of a fenny plant. The first advantage of fenny plant, plant, if any plant grows as ornament in home and the offices. You can see there is an ornament within our houses that is a fen. It's placed within a, a, a bucket that is a fen. Though it acts as ornament in your offices in your home that is the advantages number two advantages is the source of food for other organisms this is a plant can be eaten by other herbivores number three fern used in scientific studies in biology laboratories at the school now we are using on study we are using on study so this is the advantages of fern plant. Another advantage, when you produce 
fresh air. This is a plant. So after photosynthesis, there is production of oxygen. So the fern produce fresh air or which is the oxygen for other animals like human being and other animals. Also, fenny plant is a major component, component of coa. That is an advantage of this organism. Apart from advantages, also fenny plant it has disadvantages. Found as a weeds in many places. Found as a weeds. So apart from advantages and disadvantages, we look at the adaptation of a fenny plant. Why? able to, to live in their habitats. What help the feature which help to or to survive. So adaptation of any plant to their habitats. The first the sporophyte generation emerge about the soil. So the sporophyte it means disperse spores and then other generate other fen other fen on the soil. So this prevents the fern from being attacked by harmful organisms. That is adaptation of that fern. Number two, it has the adventitious root. Adventitious root plays a role of absorbing water in association with dissolved mineral ions from the from the soil to the cell. Of a fenny plant. So there is an adventitious root which plays a role absorbing water from the soil to the cell of the fenny plants. That is number two adaptation. But also it has a reason play role for anchoring the, the storage of food substance for future use. There is reason. So this reason is a for storage of food. So the food of that fair. So presence of reservity able to make the storage of food and then this family is going to survive daily and then daily. So help to survive. Number four, presence of well organized vascular tissue, vascular tissue, which is xylem and the floor that distribute material within the whole plant cells. There is plant vascular tissue. That is number four. Number five, there is lamenta, protective foliage, and the new flowers from the being exhausted by irritating factors. During the irrigation, during the irritation, can face this lamenta and the flowers. So the lamenta protects the foliage and the new flowers from being exalted by irritating factors. Number four, number five. The presence of chlorophyll says the plants will be autotrophs. This is autotrophic. It is an autotrophic mode. So it has chlorophyll. Which help in manufacturing of the food. Remember that chlorophyll it trap the light, which is required for photosynthesis. So this this is an adaptation of this organism, which is called a fairy plant. So from common name up to the advantages up to economic importance. So economic importance, we have to combine advantages and the disadvantages of the Tiffany plant. And we have seen adaptation of the Tiffany plant to their habitats. I think you have understood this lesson, classification of plant, classification of Tiffany plant, kingdom plantae, classification of living organisms. Thank you for learning with me. And you, my name is Mr. Magul, expert on physics, chemistry, and biology. If you have the questions for this topic, 
for this organism about fern. I think you can ask through my number 062 Thank you for learning with me.